the top 15 places and things you should know before visiting SeaWorld in San Diego. If you're planning a trip to SeaWorld, we'll visit all the top attractions that you won't want to miss while you're here. We'll start with some of the newest rides and attractions, then we'll visit popular places like the Wild Arctic, the Orca Encounter, Dolphin Point, the Shark Encounter, the new SeaWorld Rescue Junior Kids area, and much more. We'll explore the gift shops and restaurants and see the shows and concerts. SeaWorld is a marine zoological themed park located just 10 minutes away from downtown San Diego. It's known for the animal exhibits, aquariums, rides, shows, and entertainment. It was the first SeaWorld park opening back in 1964, and at the time it only had a few animals and exhibits. Over the years, the park has expanded, including new attractions such as roller coasters, water rides, and shows. Today, it's a popular attraction for residents and tourists. Here are our top 15 must-see attractions for your next visit. Starting at the front entrance, one of the first tips is to arrive early. Visitors begin lining up at the front gates about 30 minutes before opening. In the morning, it's easy to find parking up close. We came early to ride the new Arctic Rescue Coaster, and the wait ended up being only a few minutes. The front gates have security and metal detectors, and once you're inside, there's already plenty to do. One of the first things you'll see is the Explorer's Reef Touch Pools. Here, you can get up close and touch sharks and fish, and the trainers share information and answer questions about reef sea life. Here at the front of the park, you'll also find guest services and the Sea Pixels booth where you can buy your photos if you have them taken by the photographers around the park. You can rent strollers and scooters here, and you'll also see the SeaWorld store, which has the largest collection of SeaWorld merchandise at the park. And if you need a quick snack, there's the Dryer's Ice Cream Parlor, or you can buy Starbucks items at Coral Market. Next is the Wild Arctic, which includes the new Arctic Rescue Coaster. On this day, we headed straight to ride the Arctic Rescue. The new coaster is a snowmobile-themed ride that takes you on a rescue mission. The ride launches three times along the track, reaching 40 miles per hour. It's great for riders 48 inches or taller, and it's a fun coaster with twists and turns, and the three accelerations catch you by surprise. In the same building is the Wild Arctic Base Station, which in my opinion is one of the best themed areas in the park. The base station shows you how life is living at an Arctic research station. There are three main exhibits where you can see animals from above and below the water. Here you'll see these amazing walruses that can weigh up to two tons. Their thick blubber keeps them warm in the icy Arctic weather, and their large tusks are used as a dominance display and to help them get out of the water. Close by are the harbor seals, which can be found around most of the world. One of the deepest diving mammals, they can dive 1600 feet deep for up to 30 minutes to catch their prey. And one of my favorite animals to visit here is the beluga whale. These majestic creatures are related to narwhals and they can be recognized by their signature white color and the absence of a dorsal fin. There's a beluga whale experience here where you can pay to meet and interact with the beluga whales. Exiting the exhibit, you'll pass through the Arctic Trading Post, which has lots of Arctic themed merch. Not far from here is the Penguin Encounter, which is a walkthrough exhibit with nearly 400 penguins, including Emperor, King, and Adelie penguins. I recommend downloading the SeaWorld app, which has schedules of all the events during the day. For example, you can attend an aviculturist talk here, where animal experts share facts about the different penguins. If you visit at the right time, you can also see the penguins during their feeding time. It was amazing seeing this little penguin eating a fish almost a quarter its size all at once. The Emperor Dive Coaster is one of the newest attractions here at the park. The ride is themed after Emperor Penguins, which are known for their deep diving capabilities. The ride begins with a dangle drop 150 feet above the ground, followed by inverted loops and corkscrews. This is one of the fastest and tallest floorless dive coasters in California, with a top speed of 60 miles per hour. If you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos about Southern California. It really helps the channel. The next stop is the Orca Underwater Viewing Area. This is one of my favorite places in the park because you have an opportunity to stand just feet away from the orcas. We stopped by during the Dine with the Orcas show, and it's an experience where visitors can pay to have a meal right next to the orcas performing. This is also a perfect time to visit the Orca's Underwater Viewing Area. During the show, you'll be able to see the orcas performing maneuvers and dives right in front of you from underwater. The Orca Encounter Show is an educational presentation that teaches visitors about the natural behaviors of orcas. As visitors are seating, there's an on-screen trivia game with questions about orcas and the oceans. 
Once the show begins, we learn about the orcas' hunting techniques and social behaviors as the orcas perform a variety of behaviors and tricks such as jumps and flips. Also known as killer whales, orcas are highly intelligent apex predators that live in all the world's oceans. They work together to hunt and live in closely knit family groups known as pods. Although the show focuses on education, there are plenty of exciting moments. The front rows are splash zone seating and during the show the orcas splash water out into the crowd. For one segment, volunteers sit at the edge of the tank as the orcas create waves. Just outside of the stadium is the whale shop where you can pick up souvenirs and the Orca West Market is a quick stop for snacks and drinks. Dolphin Point is an open water exhibit where visitors can come face to face with bottlenose dolphins. There are experiences here like the Dolphin Encounter where visitors can stand poolside and learn about their behaviors and interact with the dolphins. There's also the Dolphin In Water Interaction where you can join the dolphins in the water to play and feed them. This is one of the best times to visit as you'll see them performing maneuvers, playing, jumping, and having a good time. There's also the Dolphin Adventure Stadium Show, which we'll talk about later in the video. Next to Dolphin Point is the Otter Outlook, an outdoor exhibit that features playful sea otters. During the trainer talks, you can see the otters eating from these special containers. You can find the schedule for these presentations using the SeaWorld app. Nearby, you'll find a few dining and beverage stops like the Underwater Cantina, and just next door is the Manta Roller Coaster. The Manta is a multimedia coaster with two launches. The ride begins as the coaster travels through a tunnel launched to 43 miles per hour through a series of twists and turns above and below the Manta exhibit. The ride covers a lot of ground, then leads close to the north end of the park through another launch and series of turns. This ride is highly recommended for riders 48 inches or taller. The ride exits into the Japanese village, one of the remnants from a land here from the original SeaWorld opening. You can still see original designs here such as this Japanese bell and this statue. If you're in the area, you can visit and feed the bat rays and guitar fish, and there's an often overlooked aquarium viewing area just below the deck. The Shipwreck Island area used to be the original entrance to SeaWorld back in 1964. Here you'll find the Shipwreck Rapids Ride, which travels through the South Pacific Island themed area, which is decorated with stranded ships. Riders board a raft following a winding whitewater river. Along the way, the raft passes by sea turtles and through a waterfall. If you're riding, definitely plan on getting wet. Near the entrance is the Island Trader Store, where you can buy ponchos or other souvenirs. There's also the large dryers nearby if you need them. Further down the path is the tide pools where you can see sea urchins and sea stars. Years ago, this was the location of the Sea Grotto, one of the original SeaWorld aquariums when it first opened. And you'll also find the Tidal Twister, a unique infinity loop ride that is one of its kind in the world. It travels up to 30 miles per hour in alternating directions. Next door is the Bayside Amphitheater. When SeaWorld first opened, this area was called the Dolphin Lagoon, and it was the location of the first dolphin show. Years later, the dolphins were moved to their own stadium. Today, this is where they host the SeaWorld Summer Concert Series with artists like Vanilla Ice, Little Bow Wow, Ashanti, and more. This is also the site of the Pirates Ahoy, the Battle for Mermaid Cove show. This water stunt show features acrobatics and hydro flying, telling the story of pirates battling for control of Mermaid Cove. The family friendly action show is packed with stunts, special effects, and high energy performances. Outside the theater is Mermaid Cove, where guests can meet and take photos with mermaids, and there's also the Surf's Up Arcade. The waterfront is a grassy seating area that sits along Mission Bay. This is a nice place to stop for a snack or enjoy the view or the sunset. You can often hear performances from the nearby Bayside Amphitheater. An interesting historical fact is that this used to be a Polynesian tiki hut themed area called the Hawaiian Punch Village. It was known for the animatronic punch band and at the time there was even alligators here. Next door is the entrance to the Bayside Skyride, a gondola ride that takes visitors on a trip over Perez Cove and Mission Bay. The six minute Skyride has beautiful views of SeaWorld and the parks around Mission Bay. One thing to note is there is a $6 fee to ride the gondolas, but there's no charge for annual members. Shark Encounter features a 280,000 gallon exhibit with close up views of sharks. Entering the exhibit, you'll see sharks as they swim near the surface in several different pools. Following the trail through the caves leads you to a 57 foot long underwater acrylic tube where you'll be inches away from the sharks. The exhibit features sand tiger sharks, bonnet heads, 
black tips, and white tipped reef sharks. Near the exit are the teeth of a megalodon, which was the largest predator ever to have existed. With an estimated length of up to 60 feet, these sharks ate whales, dolphins, and other marine mammals. Just around the corner is Turtle Reef. The large aquarium features loggerhead and green sea turtles swimming through the reef environment. Check the app for the feeding time and you can visit to see the turtles feeding and learn about their habitats, how they nest, and some of the threats they face in the wild. There's also an interactive educational game here called Race for the Beach, where players can navigate obstacles on their journey home to the beach. Near the exit is Reef Gifts and the Shark Market. Close by is the Discovery's Fresh Market, which has some of the best fresh food here at the park. Nearby is the Riptide Rescue, which is a spinning ride themed for sea turtle rescues. The Mission Bay Amphitheater is a large, air-conditioned indoor theater known for hosting performances and concerts. We visited during the O.P. Otter Summer Vacation Show. This is a great spot to take a break from the summer heat and to get out of the sun. By the theater, you can also visit the Caribbean flamingos. And these flamingos eat brine shrimp and blue-green algae, which makes their naturally white feathers turn pink. Close by is Sea Lion Point, an interactive exhibit with sea lions and harbor seals. You can visit during one of the trainer talks and hear stories from the trainers who take care of the sea lions and seals. You can also buy food to feed to the sea lions. And if you do, just keep an eye out for the birds looking for a free meal. The Sea Lion and Otter Spotlight Show features California sea lions and Asian small clawed otters. The show is entertaining and educational, and with a comedic storyline, the show highlights the abilities, intelligence, and social behaviors of the sea lions and otters. The Explorer's Garden is a sea exploration themed area with rides and attractions designed for the youngest visitors. Riders 31 inches or taller can ride the Octa Rock, and those 36 inches or taller can ride the Aqua Scout and the Sea Dragon Drop. And if you're 40 inches or taller, I recommend riding the Tentacle Twirl, which is a fun swing ride with twists and turns. The Ocean Explorer is an exhibit that allows visitors to learn about a variety of marine animals, including crabs, eels, and these amazing octopus. There are also a variety of restaurants and bars, including Explorer's Cafe and Bar, High Tide Brews, and the Electric Eel Bar. Nearby is the Electric Eel Roller Coaster. It's a steel launched coaster, including loops, twists, and an inverted heartline roll. This ride has three launches, rocketing riders up to 62 miles per hour, 150 feet into the air. One of the best parts is the non-inverting loop at the top that gives you a feeling of weightlessness high above the ground. The nearby Journey to Atlantis is a water coaster ride that is inspired by the legend of Atlantis. The ride begins with a climb to the top of its first peak with a panoramic view of the park. It then drops down a steep hill splashing into the lagoon below. After traveling around the lagoon, an elevator raises the boat to drop it down onto a track into a splashdown finale. Exiting the ride, you'll pass by the Ray Aquarium where you can see sharks, rays, and fish. And there's a gift shop here where you can pick up souvenirs or ponchos for the ride. The Nautilus Amphitheater is an open-air venue that hosts various concerts and live performances throughout the year. We visited during the Feathers, Scales, and Rescue Tales show, which introduces some of the animals that are part of the SeaWorld Rescue program. SeaWorld Rescue Junior is a new play area designed to educate kids about marine animal rescue. It opened on May 27th, 2023 and has rescue themed rides, a splash zone, and animal presentations. Some of the new attractions include the SeaWorld Rescue Talks and Animal Meet and Greets. During the presentations, you can meet and learn about the unique rescued animals here. When we visited, we had a chance to see this llama up close and even pet an alligator. The surrounding play areas have been updated, now called the Mini Rescuer Training Zone. The ocean-themed play area is full of structures, including a rescue boat, a plane, sandcastle, and a pier. The net climbing area is similar to before, but updated and refurbished. The rides have been rebranded from their former Sesame Street themes, and now they include the Tide Pool Twist, the Rescue Riders, and the Rescue Rafter. The Splash Zone is a lot of fun, especially on the hot summer days. And there's an arcade where you can play games for tickets to win prizes. 
Next is the Dolphin Adventure, which is a live show at the Dolphin Adventure Stadium. This show features bottlenose dolphins and pilot whales demonstrating their intelligence and behaviors. The show begins with pre-show entertainment and 16 bottlenose dolphins enter the pool, showing off their athleticism and agility. The trainers explain how they work with the dolphins and whales. Then a volunteer helps to feed the dolphins squid and fish. The pilot whales demonstrate their speed and power and the finale has the dolphins all together performing their signature tricks. Between shows, you can view the dolphins and pilot whales in their tanks at the Dolphin Overlook, and nearby you can even see a sloth right by the dolphin pool. There are also food options around here. Across the way is the Calypso Smokehouse, which is a popular barbecue restaurant here. And just next door is the Build-A-Bear Workshop. The Sky Tower Lawn is an area at the center of the park near the Sky Tower. There's a stage here surrounded by grass seating and tables, and around the lawn you'll find craft beer vendors, the pretzel shop, the chicken snack shack, and hibisco restaurant. There's also many carnival style rides and games where you can play for prizes. Oftentimes there's live music, performers and DJs, and even dancing. During our visit we saw SeaWorld's Summer Parade, and the parade has colorful floats, music and dancing with the SeaWorld characters. High above is the Sky Tower a 320 foot tall observation tower. The Sky Tower is an add-on experience that costs $6, but there's no charge for season pass holders. The tower offers 360 degree views and on clear days you can see up to 100 miles in each direction. I made sure to time our visit perfectly to show you the fireworks from inside the Sky Tower. It's actually the last ride of the night, so if you arrive shortly before then, you can make it. At the end of the day, near the front of the park, we saw the Laser Reef Summer Spectacular, which is a laser light show choreographed to music with fog and lighting effects. It's a great way to end the day before heading home. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos about Southern California. It really helps the channel. Now click here to continue the adventure. I'll see you in the next video.